We are now going to start our studies of piecewise functions. Okay, piecewise functions are uh, several different equations. There are several different equations that we put together to make put them together to make one equation or graph. Okay, so there's several pieces. For example, f of x equals, notice how there's an equation here, negative x plus 1. That's if your x values are less than 1. Not equal to 1, but less than 1, like 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then there's this other piece, x squared plus 2, and that's going to be a parabola. That's if your x values are 1 and higher. Okay, so what we're going to do here is go ahead and plug in different values, and we're going to see if we can figure out what the answers are. So f of negative 2, that's going to go into this equation here. A negative negative 2 plus 1 more makes 3. Find f of negative 1. So you put negative 1 into the function, but then you have to figure out where you're going to evaluate it. It can't be in both. Negative 1 is going to go into this first equation here. Negative negative 1 plus 1 makes a 2. How about f of 0? 0 is going to go into this top equation and the answer is 1. Okay, let's keep plugging in numbers. How would you evaluate f of 1? 1 going into this function has to get evaluated, oh, here, greater than or equal to 1. 1 squared plus 2 makes 3. f of a 2, that's going to go into this bottom part here. 2 squared four plus 2 more makes a 6. f of 3, that's going to go into this bottom one here. And that's going to make 11. Okay, so we've got two different sets. Um, these top three numbers right here, these were evaluated in this top equation. Okay, and then these next three down here, these were evaluated in this equation. Okay, uh, what is the shape of the graph for the numbers that are more than or equal to 1? So what shape is that piece? Okay, this shape makes a parabola. Parabola, I'm going to color code everything red and green. And what shape was the graph for the numbers that were less than 1? Okay, that was a line. That was a line. Uh, downhill. Downhill, since the slope was negative. All right, let's graph these piecewise. Okay, so I'm going to still color code. I'm going to do this top equation here. I'm going to do this downhill line, uh, and what helps sometimes, here's a little note, this helps people a lot, okay, uh, plug, plug in the endpoints. If we plug in the endpoints, we'll know where things start, okay, and since it's less than 1, okay, it's not going to equal 1, uh, to find the open bubble. How do you know if it's an open bubble or a closed bubble? This one's going to be an open bubble, and that one's going to be a closed bubble. So if I put 1 in, uh, I think I already did that, did I not? No, yeah, f of 1 makes a 3. So 1 comma 3. Oh, no, I didn't put it in yet. No, 1 one makes a zero. Oops, sorry guys. Uh, and here, this one, if you plug one in, that makes a three. One comma three. Okay, so we've got a downhill line. The y-intercept is at one. If I go down one over one, one comma zero, that's an open bubble. If I put a negative one, that value is two. Negative 2 made a 3. Okay, so here is, and this keeps going, going, going left forever. At this point, maybe we could just use slope to find all the rest of the points. Now, what about this second piece right here? This piece is a 
parabola, it usually starts up at 2, and then it goes over 1, up 1, and now I'm at the point 1, 3. That's right where the parabola is going to start. If I plug in 2, I would get 6. And so this piece is the shape of a parabola. So if I just show you the stuff that's left of one, it's going to look like a line. But if I show you the stuff to the right of one, it's going to look like a parabola. Okay, Numbers are only allowed in one piece of the equation. You can't put a number into both sections of the equation. All right, how else can we plug in some numbers? Let's take a look. Here is an equation okay, with three pieces. We've got three pieces of an equation, f of x equals piece 1, 2, 3. Okay. This top equation, this piece right here, is for x's that are less than or equal to negative 2. So if I take a look at a number line, here's negative 2 and everything less. Uh, between negative 2 and positive 2, that's this middle piece right here and then everything greater than or equal to 2. So if I color coded this for you, this top piece, I'm going to call this piece number 1. Piece number 1 is going to be in this section right here, negative 2, and all the numbers less. Okay, All these numbers, you plug into that first piece. If you are between negative 2 and 2, so open bubbles, negative 2 to 2, not including them, then you would plug the number into the middle piece piece number 2, plug the number into that equation. And finally, if you're greater than or equal to 2, so if you're 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then I'm going to plug the number into this piece of the equation. Okay, so let's use this chart. Plugging in negative 4, that's going to go into piece number 1. So let's color code. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Negative 3, that's also going to go into piece 1. And that gives us negative 6. What happens when you plug in negative 2? Are you still going to use piece number 1? Yes. Yes, negative 2 is the borderline. We're still going to plug it into piece number 1. And that gives us negative 5. Okay, now I'm at negative 1. Now I'm into the second part of the equation here. Zone number 2. Negative 1 squared. The opposite of that. Plus 5 makes a 4. How about a 0? Is that still in this, this piece? Yep. That's going to make a 5. Let's plug in a 1. That's still in this middle piece. That makes a 4. Where would I plug in the value 2? Oh, that's going to jump us here to this, this last piece. Numbers that are 2, 3, 4, 5 get plugged into that equation. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay, so do you get the idea of how a piecewise equation, a piecewise function has three different equations, as many as you want really, and it tells you where the numbers go. Okay, uh, we are going to start graphing them a little bit at and kind of, okay, so I've got a parabola if you're less than negative 3 and an uphill line if you're more than negative 3. So something is definitely happening at this border here at negative 3. So let's just go ahead and draw a line at negative 1, 2, 3. Something is happening here at negative 3. All of this, this is numbers less than negative 3. If you're less than negative 3, the shape of the graph over here is going to be a parabola. But if you are uh, more than negative 3, what's the shape of the graph? It's going to be a line. It's going to be an uphill line. An uphill line. Okay. Right now, we're just kind of getting the hang of part of the graph paper is going to be parabola, part of it's going to be a line. Are there going to be two graphs on top of each other? Absolutely not. Okay. Less than 3 is the parabola. 
parabola, and more than negative 3 is going to be the line. What happens at negative 3? Nothing. You're going to have an open bubble there. So there's going to be no graph at negative 3. All right, let's do it again. I want to look at a piecewise equation. I want to section off my graph paper to see what's going to be going on between the sections. So the first one right here, this piece, are for x's that are less than negative 2. So if this is negative 2 right here, everything less than negative 2 is going to be this uphill line. Uphill line. Okay, how about the second piece? The second piece is between negative 2 and 3. Okay, so there's negative 2. 1, 2, 3. Here's 3. Between negative 2 and 3, this piece is going to be the shape of a parabola. A parabola. Is it the entire parabola? No, it's just a piece of them. Okay, so the rest of him isn't going to be there. Just the piece of the parabola that's right there. And finally, the third section, if you are more than or equal to 3. Okay, this last section over here, 3, 4, 5, 6, is going to be the shape of a cubic. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. So this piecewise graph, we're not going to graph it right now, would have a line, a parabola, and a cubic. Okay, and something to note, the pieces of graph... The pieces of graph never overlap. Okay, very important that the pieces never overlap each other. So something that we're going to practice doing one day, we're going to take little pieces of paper. Do you see just a parabola? Do you see just a line? Okay, do you see just a line? Do you see just a parabola? You can do that with your hands or with pieces of paper or post-its. You should never have overlapping graphs. Okay, I hope this helps you understand piecewise.